Okay, seriously, Hiccup, where did you get a collapsible lightsaber like Fire Sword? In the first How to Train Your Dragon movie, Hiccup was always a bit different from the rest of the Vikings in Burke, which allowed him to tame the once feared dragons and engineer inventions. But in the second film, we get to see a brand new, truly unique and epic weapon, the Dragon Blade. Now, I couldn't find an explanation on where this sword came from in the films, but I was able to do some digging within the show Race to the Edge to find an explanation on where it came from. Hello, I'm Isaac from Watso Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people, and today I'm definitely discussing something awesome. After watching How to Train Your Dragon 1 and 2 for the first time and falling in love with these stories in this world, the first topic I'm going to break down on this DreamWork epic is the history behind Hiccup's Dragon Blade Inferno. If you'd like to learn more about Hiccup and his sword, I've provided all the links to the movies and the resources I used in the description. And to continue discussing How to Train Your Dragon with me, make sure to subscribe and to click that notification button. During the episode Tone Death, from Dragon's Race to the Edge, we learn the original idea of creating an inflamed blade came from the need to remove Tough Nut and Rough Nut's chicken from Hardened Death Song Amber. By covering a dagger in the extremely flammable, monstrous nightmare saliva provided by Hookfang, and lighting the saliva with the spark from Belch, a hideous zippleback, Hiccup could safely utilize Dragon Flames to remove the Hardened Amber. To ensure Hiccup and the other Dragon Riders could free themselves later in the episode when they must confront a fully grown Death Song, Hiccup creates a larger blade than his original knife with a hollowed hilt to store monstrous nightmare saliva. Also on the hilt was a built-in igniter to allow him to summon Dragon Fire at a moment's notice. In a deleted scene from How to Train Your Dragon 2, we do see monstrous nightmare saliva can be replaced by other flammable liquids like the saliva of a storm cutter. But substances like the storm cutter produce flames that are too uncontrollable to be practical for the wielder. After utilizing the fire sword for the first time and taking on the death song, Hiccup names his sword Inferno, which is supported by the art of How to Train Your Dragon 2, much to his friend's distaste. But personally, I think this name is fire, and if you think so too, drop a fire emoji in the comment section. In this moment, Astrid also suggests if the blade was twice as big, it would be a really cool sword. And Hiccup agrees he should lengthen the shaft, add another canister for nightmare gel, and make the gas canister airtight. Even before he completed his modifications to improve the sword though, Hiccup began to use and experiment with Inferno frequently. Although we see in the Race to the Edge episode, Family on the Edge, Inferno has to be put out by Toothless. In other episodes like Midnight Scrum, Hiccup uses Inferno to cause a sheep stampede and fight against one of Drago Bloodfist's minions, Krogan. And in the episodes Out of the Frying Pan and Blindsided, he uses Inferno to defend himself and pacify the Fire Terrors and the Triple Strike Dragons. Inferno was in use, but it was constantly being tinkered with and evolved to meet Hiccup's needs. In the Season 5 episodes Something Rotten on Berserker Island and The Dawn of Destruction, we finally see Hiccup's fire sword has been replaced by an extended formidable blade, and the hilt is replaced by the one seen in How to Train Your Dragon 2. Hiccup then continues to utilize Inferno as both a weapon and tool, which is perfectly encapsulated in the Race to the Edge episode No Dragon Left Behind, where Hiccup uses the Dragon Fire to free Stormfly from Death Song Amber and activate the sword as a torch in an underground cave. This use of Inferno continues until Hiccup gains a great idea from an enemy from his past. After seeing Hiccup's fire sword, Vigo Grimborn, leader of the Dragon Hunters, reveals in the episode Triple Cross that he has crafted a fire sword extremely similar to Hiccup's, except for one added feature. At the base of Vigo's hilt, a canister could release hideous sickleback gas to be sparked to create explosions. This very idea would later be implemented into a revised version of Inferno, which Hiccup discovered served well at influencing the hostile dragons he discovered in far off lands. Hiccup explains in a DVD bonus feature on his sword, 
If I get surrounded by a bunch of hostile dragons, I release a cartridge from the back of the sword that has hideous simple back gas in it, and it creates a flash explosion that gets their attention. This assists me in befriending just about any dragon out there. The Dragon Blade Hiccup created is only one of three tools known to influence or control dragons, along with Velka's staff and Drago's bullhook, making his sword an extremely useful tool. Dragons find this a very arresting image, and it helps them to see me as a dragon because I can produce fire of my own. To ensure Hiccup could pacify dragons at a moment's notice, he built Inferno's Hill to easily be able to switch between canisters, so in desperate situations, he could never run out of monstrous nightmare saliva or hideous sickleback gas. The final change he made to Inferno prior to How to Train Your Dragon 2 was the blade's ability to collapse into the hilt. The blade was forced to decrease in size due to these changes, but they were done likely so Hiccup wouldn't be forced to reach behind his back, which was a large movement that could frighten dragons. Instead, Hiccup could now store his sword on his leg along with other canisters, making Inferno an extremely accessible instrument. What began as a simple solution to capture the power of dragon fire to free individuals from Death Song Amber became so much more. After experimentation, new ideas, and a variety of models, the Dragon Blade Hiccup created didn't just become a weapon to harness dragon fire, but became the coolest, most dynamic, accessible, and necessary tool for a dragon rider. Holy smokes, How to Train Your Dragon is flippin' awesome! I'm so glad I finally got to experience the storytelling done in these movies because they definitely represent the pinnacle of DreamWorks animation. I finished these films feeling extremely invested in the world and feeling ecstatic Hidden World is on the way, leading me to wonder about many aspects of the story beyond just Hiccup's sword. So if you enjoyed watching me explain Hiccup's sword and you'd like to see more How to Train Your Dragon videos, then click that like button. And if you're interested in staying up to date with more magical dragon videos, then click that subscribe button and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So now it's time for the question of the day sponsored by my patrons. If you could add anything to Hiccup Sword, what would it be? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section along with any other ideas you have for future videos. If you'd like to see more Watso videos, then check out some awesome pics over here. And as always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.